right, well, let's jump in. Um, thank you so much, Jeff. I want to introduce you first. We're going to talk today about, you know, if the, really the question is, you know, we're in a, do I need to say a tumultuous time in our industry, <laughs> to say the least, right? And, you know, the with the uh, removal of the compensation coming out of the MLS, nobody knows exactly what that means. You know, I've, I've gotten, I think, directionally positive feedback that people believe MLSs are going to be just fine and still very valuable without compensation in them. But nonetheless, it is a removal, right? Um, Absolutely. And, you know, we, we as MLSs offer lots of great things, but it's really helpful to know, and it's really helpful for your board of directors to know, why are you spending money on the things you're spending? And are they really, do they make a difference, right? Do people care? Does it matter? And are we delivering the types of service, training, compliance support, data quality support that they're looking for. And if you don't ask them, you kind of don't really know. You know, it's a, there's a great book out there called Measure What Matters. And this is kind of an example of that, right? Yeah. So I want to first introduce Jeff. For those that don't know him, he's a, kind of an icon in our industry. He's um, at the uh, CREN MLS, and that's Colorado Real Estate Network, I believe is what it stands for, correct? Yeah. Uh, he's been there for many, many years. I like your description of the lobby bar attendee. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the avid whitewater rafting enthusiast, and you take, I know, at least several weeks every year to just to feed that passion, right? Which is awesome. Absolutely. And Jeff has now been with us on the customer experience index path for a couple of years. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the CEO of Wave Group and the president of RE Technology. I'm, I'm honored to say this year, I'm actually the chair for the National Small Business Association, and we're adv advocating for all kinds of things for Pretty much all of us, everyone in real estate pretty much counts as a small business. So, um, but yeah, so let's just jump in. I want to just give people a quick overview. First, so just wanted to kind of brag about my team a little bit. Um, I'm really proud of our, our group. We have smart, well-educated, humble, hardworking people that have all run their own businesses. And we've got everything from, you know, the kinds of things that some of you may know that I do to PR and communications, business technology, brokerage, M&A marketing, um, even Web3, those that are crazy enough to go into that world these days. So we've got all kinds of uh, really interesting people in Wave Group. And we really draw on all of them when we think about things like the customer experience index and other things. So um, <clears throat> so I'm just giving you an overview about why we did this and why we think it makes sense. And then I really want to hear mostly from Jeff. So, you know, for many years as Wave Group, I had been doing individual market subscriber satisfaction surveys. And I could I could start to recognize patterns myself, but I couldn't share it with anyone, right? Because Jeff doesn't want me talking to somebody else about his market. So we thought, what if we could combine efforts and be able to really develop patterns, develop understanding so we could really improve the overall value proposition of all MLSs that, you know, that participate and frankly, even beyond. So the program includes a few things. Again, I'm not going to go too deep in it. I just wanted to give you a quick overview. But first is it, of course, it does an in-depth local insights on what your customers are telling you. But it also gives you peer-to-peer -peer perspective, which is really helpful because, you know, if you get an 82, is that good or bad? It depends on what your mom thought was a good grade, right? Yeah. <laughs> that might be amazing if everyone else got 60s, but if everyone else got 90s, like, well, maybe it's not so good. And the other thing that I love, I frankly, my favorite part about this program now is uh, we have smart people like Jeff and many others that participate. They get together once every few months and they brainstorm about best practices in all the different things that MLSs do. So I got to tell you, I write 14 pages of notes every time we do that. I can see everybody else doing that. So it's really neat. And it's also great because if you do something, you know, you listen to what your customers say, you put something in place, then when you come back the following year, you can track whether or not you know, it really moved the needle. I can tell you, we're, we just looked at one market yesterday that, that has been working with us for two years and they had incredible improvements by focusing on what their customers said. So it's really neat. And then finally, and not to, not last, but least as we let you brag a little, right? You guys work so hard and your staff works so hard. And frankly, usually they only hear from the people that are not happy, the 99.2% that are. So this gives you a little chance to do that too. So we, we think that's fun. Um, <laughs> so there's a um, a report that you get. We re we evaluate all the open ends, and most importantly, we try to give you what you know what I call actionable and affordable recommendations. Things that are that are something you can do within the scope of the size of your organization. You know, I could give you stuff that costs five million dollars, but most people aren't going to be able to do that, right? Um, and just wanted to show you. So there's a bunch of people, all different sizes, all different parts of the country that are involved. 
uh, all different MLS systems, you know, just a really good cross section of people. I think the one thing I would say that the common link is that it's people that genuinely really care about their customers and really want to do the right thing. And it's super fun to work with a group like that, that really do care about being there for their customers and doing, you know, make, making it happen for them. Um, and, you know, companies from all over the North America, as you can see that where the, where it falls out and we have someone from Canada as well, which is fun. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just kind of go through this quickly, but this is an example real quick. So if you said, okay, I get a 79, it'll show you, and again, an anonymized way, how well you're, you're, you're doing relative to others, right? I'm not going to tell you that, oh, Jeff is better than Suzanne, right? But I'm going to, I'm going to give you an example of kind of where you fit. Um, and then again, if you meet or exceed any of the benchmarks that we set, you get best MLS awards. And these have been really fun this year. People have been having fun with them. They've been putting them on LinkedIn and on their email signatures and all kinds of fun places, because again, it's not easy to be an MLS executive. <laughs> you get more grief than you get good positive feedback, right? So it's nice to have something to kind of take credit. And frankly, lots of times people in your local market have no idea if you're good or not because they don't know any other yeah. market, right? So this also gives them some perspective to say, wow, I really do work with a great MLS. So yeah, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, so what I, what I want to do now is just turn this off and I really want to talk to Jeff about his experience you know, in general. So why don't you just give us a little bit of a background first on, you know, who you are, Jeff, what you do and, um, you know, what, what, why you think customer satisfaction measurement even makes sense. Let's start with that. Well, thanks, Marilyn, for having me on and asking me to come on and, uh, and whatnot. And uh, I, you know, personally, I think the time right now is opportunity. I mean, it might be tumultuous times, but I think we have a huge opportunity at the MLS right now. And uh, whether that means customer service or or whatever it is we're providing, I think it's a huge opportunity. So I'm looking forward to the next uh, the next year or two, and um, I'm probably going to take a few bullets in between that time and and whatnot. But yeah, um, so thanks for having me on. Um, for sure. So so I know long before you started working with us, you were already doing customer satisfaction. You were, I think. I don't know if you've been doing it since you started the company or for a long, long time, but tell us why do you think that you need to measure customer satisfaction? Let's just start at the basics. Well, I started as executive officer at Cren in 2009 and in 2012, we did our first customer satisfaction survey. So okay. 12 years we've been doing it now. And, um, you know, that was a pretty good run. Um, I did it uh, 10 years basically and always had our own results and, you know, we take these results and go, yeah, all right, we did a great job, you know, and um, we really had nothing to compare them to, right? I mean, that was, yeah. we we're just like, oh, it looks like we're doing a great job. We could maybe do a little better job here and there, or customer service or, you know, off-market listings or, or whatever suggestions they had. And and uh, we we would definitely focus on those, you know, and, and, and whatnot. But yeah, we've been doing them for 12 years. And mm -hmm. um, of course, I kind of was like, when I saw your survey come out, I was like, wow, wouldn't it be interesting to compare um, ourselves to other MLSs? And that scared the living daylights out of me, right? <laughs> and so I was like, but you know, if we really don't know where we are compared to those other MLSs, how do we know how we're really doing? And um, yep, I got to say that was a pretty big hurdle for me to get over Maryland, you know, was, was to um, be able to come at this and say, I'm willing to accept the results, you know, however they are and however bad they were is what I had made up in my head. And uh, of course, our first year, we we did pretty good. I mean, we re really did, I think, awesome. And, and it reflected really what had been told to us the last 10 years of doing our own internal survey. But we were able to compare it to the other MLSs that were involved, you know, and and um, so that was a huge help, you know. But Cren is like, uh, I think we have about uh, 1,700 brokers and agents, 200 or so plus or minus appraisers and a bunch of PA and office staff, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we currently have four staff um, here in the Cren office and uh, to support, basically, they, they let me answer the phone once in a while, you know, like a, on a lunch break or something. Um, <laughs> but we have uh, two, basically two support staff. And um, to take care of that many members, you know, and um, we're owned by six association of realtors. 
Okay. And so we have six boards and, uh, you know, we make it a, we kind of give it a joke and we say we're the largest uh, MLS in Colorado. And then we wait about five seconds and we say geographically um, because we cover a huge <laughs> geographic area in Southwest Colorado. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I think for, for us, um, we try to take the piece the bits and pieces away from the survey um, of where we show weaknesses, you know, and, and uh, really try to, try to hone in on those things. But um, yeah, you know, I, 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 yeah, I think it's a great, I, I love it. I mean, I, I would be hard pressed to say we'd be going back to our own survey. That's awesome. So tell me how, you know, I, I'm so glad that you love it. Cause I, you know, it's, we engineered it to do exactly what you said. So I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad that you got over the fear because I don't care any company of any sort doing any kind of satisfaction survey. We all have that, you know, immediate belief that everybody hates us and we're going to do terrible. And it's just human nature, I think. But how did your board respond to the, you know, the ability to sort of compare your results to others and how did your staff respond? <laughs> I think the staff were definitely uh, a little bit apprehensive, you know, they were kind of like, Oh, all right. You know, and, until they saw the results, of course. Right. Right. Because they were maybe thinking the same thing, but, um, my board, we don't really get super excited about about much on my board of directors, you know. So, <laughs> so we got to say, you know, they just look at it and go, "Oh, wow, great," you know. And I, I got to say, you know, sometimes uh, they use that survey to to look at staff and increases in wages or or any type of bonuses or, um, you know, I think I told you on our on our warm up, uh, we. we uh, when I got the survey results this year, I immediately was like, we're buying lunch. What? That's it. We're buying lunch. Because this is something that I personally, man, my management style, I don't stop and celebrate enough. And I know that. And so I dropped everything we were doing and we bought I, either breakfast or lunch every day for a week. And, uh, you know, and it was a great, 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 great way to reward the staff for sure. And just small things like that, you know, are, are, are I think what really goes a long ways with, with the staff. That's awesome. Yeah. I, and I, I, that's another sort of common link I've seen with the people that have been attracted to this is they tend to be more humble servant leaders and it's not about them. And it's like, Oh gosh, Oh, did I do a good job? It's like, no, you really did do a good job. So it's nice to be able to share that. And, you know, in these days with these things changing and maybe some people's perception that compensation is what makes an MLS MLS, we're going to all kind of have to think about, how do we take, not be braggy, right? That's not who we are, but take credit for the fact that we really are delivering strong service and support and also sharing that, hey, you gave us some great suggestions. Here's what we're going to do to improve as we move forward. So it can help on both sides. You know, I hit, I think you hit on, on this point when you were uh, doing the introduction and whatnot. It's, it's kind of tough sometimes being the MLS, right? Because we are the cops, you know, we're the MLS cops. And a lot of times you hear from us, um, you know, and, and when something's wrong, right. I mean, Hey, you know, you got to fix this listing. You got to do that clear cooperation policy 8.0, whatever it is. Right. And so it's, it's tough having that role, you know? And, um, I think, I, I think my staff have really done a great job of taking that role and mm -hmm. trying to turn it into a positive thing of, Hey, you know, we're trying to provide the best data, that we can for you guys to utilize whatever it is off market sales or statistics or whatever it is inside the system. And, and that's why we're calling you. We, we want it. We're calling you because we want a full data set and we want to make our data as accurate as possible, you know? Um, exactly. But it is tough taking bullets as, as the MLS police sometimes, you know? So I, I just have to ask you, um, and he, again, Jeff is not a braggy guy, but he did really well the first year and he did even better the second year. Um, so tell us, you know, you you looked at every single one of those, there's seven KPIs that we measure, you know, technology, compliance, et cetera, et cetera. Jeff went up on every single one of them. What what do you attribute your success to? What did you do differently? Or how, how did it how did this help you get there? Um, you know, I, I don't know that I can attribute it to any one thing, Marilyn. I really don't, because um we we really you know, the culture that I try to create at, at Cren is, you know, customer is first. I mean, everything else we are doing gets dropped to answer that phone or call somebody back or answer an email. 
And I, and I strive to, 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 to preach that all the time, you know, and um, it's, it's the most important thing for us. We're a little bit different uh, uh, of an MLS or maybe there are others out there like us, but um, we try to support every single software that we offer. So whether it's Forewarn or Instanet or Paragon or any of the software tools that we offer, um, we try to support fully everything. We, we, we want them to call us the MLS office first. Um, mm -hmm. and so we take a huge responsibility and I think that's a huge load on our back, you know, to, to try to support all these different tools that in all reality, my staff doesn't use them. I mean, right. we're trying to use them as a real estate agent and, uh, you know, and trying to say, well, why would you do it that way? Sometimes we don't know. Um, right. So, um, I, yeah, I, I think uh, I think that is the challenge, but it's also the opportunity to to provide really that white glove touch of customer service, you know, and I, I um, that's what I hung my hat on when I came to Cran. I think in 2012, I remember writing up a little personal mission, you know, of what my mission at Cran is. And my personal mission is different than the company's mission. And, you know, the number one thing was customer service, because I know people want a place that they can call and get the answer. And don't you think right now, because everyone's losing their mind, because nobody really knows what the future looks like, that we're even more important than ever? Are you yes. getting calls when people are saying, what the heck does this mean to me? And am, am I going to have to pay back my commission? Or like, are you, are you getting those crazy, <laughs> crazy calls? Yeah. Yeah. And I do think it is. And I, I think that's why. You know, I, I, I hate to be, I mean, sometimes they call me the sergeant or something, but, you know, I think it's really, really important that when the bell rings eight o'clock, we answer the phone, not yeah. eight oh five, because we're just still getting our coffee or whatever. And, and we're here till five, you know, we've talked about having Saturday hours and, and things like that as well. Um, but for us, that just hasn't been, that just hasn't come around yet that type of support, but I know it's important. I mean, I'd love to do it if we could, if we could, if we could have it in the budget to, to have support on the weekends for sure. But um, for now, yeah, that's what we do. We, I just try to real basic, you know, basic foundation, answer the phone, answer the emails, call people back, you know, be proactive and getting answers to them. Yeah. And, you know, I, sometimes I think, and I, we all understand this, that it's and especially if you're in compliance, you unfortunately, it's kind of like being on the police force. You see the worst in people, <laughs> right? How how do you keep your staff like smiling and feeling good? And even when they might get frustrated with somebody or someone might get frustrated with them, how do you get, you know, get them through that and keep them, keep them moving forward? Well, I wish I could say that we have a punching bag here at the, uh, at the Cren office, <laughs> <laughs> but we do not, you know, I, I, I think, uh, they all kind of personally do their own thing to, to make sure things bounce off of them, you know? And I think the biggest thing is not to take it personally, you know? I mean, hey, this isn't directed at you. It's directed at some policy and it might be some NAR policy right now that everybody's upset with, especially in this time, right. um, you know? And so I think that the biggest thing is they, they try not to take it personally, of course, we have great conversations in the in the Cren office that don't go outside of our walls, um, you know, about that one person that calls or or whatever. But um, we try to keep it light, you know. We we try to keep it light and don't take it personal. Perfect. So one thing I would love this is a more tactical question, but um, we we are still amazed at the first of all Jeff fields this in mid December, which is. So like totally against what everybody says about surveys that no one will answer anything. And not only does he do it at a time when you're not supposed to do it, he gets the highest amount of, res of response to it than anyone we've seen. What do you, what do you think is your, your secret for that? That's another good lesson for all of us on the call. Well, it's not a secret at all, Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, I originally started doing the survey in 2012 at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And my thinking behind it and I remember thinking this was, you know, during Christmas and New Year's, people have a little more time on their hands and they aren't doing so many transactions and, and that type of thing. And so I tried, I, I tried it. And uh, um, I, I will say that um, I think the reason we get so many people to take it 
And this is one thing the board definitely backed me up on, and that is we offer prizes. But there's no doubt that we have to invest in something that is a value for us as the MLS. And so we give away, I can't remember, but we give away the, the grand prize is an iPad. So okay. no doubt, whatever, 800 bucks, if you want to throw that out there. We yep. give out four $100 gift cards, four 50s, and four $25 gift cards. So we have 13 winners. Um, and I think that helps people, um, motivates them to want to take the survey. Um, mm -hmm. But I hope it doesn't skew their feedback to us. But um, yeah, I think I think that is why. And I can tell you that I know what we've done the last two years with with you guys. But we had better numbers when we did it on our own, you know, but I, I think it's it's all kind of relative. Right. I mean, I think we learned that first year. I think the email came from you and we learned, oh, maybe it's better if it comes from Jeff. And so yep. we tried that. And so we got better, better traction or better, better, uh, better conduit of, of communication from that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, it is a weird time of year. I don't know why we get that many people, but I, I just got to think it's over Christmas and New Year's and they're just kind of hanging out by their by their TV with their laptop. And they're like, well, I can fill this out. I mean, if I'm filling out a contract, I'm not going to do it right now, but I can just fill out this survey and give some feedback. So, yeah. And I can't remember. I mean, I don't know. Did you even, I, I don't know that I have the percentage. Did you have, do you have the percentage on hand? 25? It was high. It was something like that. 2025. 20, Most people are in the seven to 10% range, sometimes 12, 15, but you're way above. So, so I guess people can be bought. That's the, that's the lesson. <laughs> Give them some good incentive and they're going to, they're going to come with you. Yeah. You know, we make it, we make it like a, like a thing to celebrate. Like uh, we're, we're actually, uh, it's, it's so funny because today I'm driving to Durango and tomorrow we have a, a shareholders meeting and a board of directors meeting and at that board of directors meeting. We have all the names cut up and we're putting them into a bowl and we're actually going to, during our board of directors meeting, we're going to pull names out of that bowl for the winners. And um, so we kind of make it a fun thing as well, you know, and uh, it Great. just happens to be happen, happening tomorrow. So we'll know the winners tomorrow. And we, we try to, you know, post them on the homepage and I take a picture with somebody with the eye, get handing over the iPad and that type of thing. And I think, I think people buy into it and they know, that yeah, we're going to be giving out the prizes and, and Hey, I could win one of them, you know? That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So just, um, we're heading up on the top of the hour. If anybody has any questions for Jeff or for myself, feel free to throw them into the, um, into the chat there. Um, but just, you know, for, you know, you've got a lot of your peers on this call. What, what would you say is, uh, what's your advice to them if they're thinking about doing something like this or what, what, what would be your closing thoughts for them? Let's head to the lobby bar and uh, and have a cocktail <laughs> and let's hopefully that will calm your nerves down that that you can accept whatever feedback you get, you know, because I, I think that was my biggest thing. Right, Marilyn. And, and I mentioned that earlier is I didn't know how to compare to, you know, some of these other larger, larger MLSs really, um, you know, when it comes to customer service, because they got, you know, certain things in place and and uh and um and that type of thing and feedback and uh and all that jazz and so i didn't know what the results were going to come come out and i just i just had to accept that you know and and i really in the back of my mind i guess i was willing to accept it but i guess in the back of my mind i was like if we get low results then we got to roll up our sleeves and come up with a plan exactly and and, and try to figure it out so well um, i think you had the it's scary, but if you, and this is a good way to, I think I've heard people position it to their boards is this is, we're kind of drawing a baseline, right? Like this yeah. year, one, year one, we don't know what we're going to get because we've, you know, in some cases we haven't measured anything at all. We certainly haven't yeah. used exactly these questions. So we're not doing it to give ourselves a report card per se. We're just really trying to understand, get some perspective. And yep. like, hey, if it's terrific. Great. If it isn't, and we've got one that is a newer MLS, they haven't performed as well, but they were like, it's okay, because now we know where we can go from here and what and what we can do differently, right? So everybody's at a different place. I think you have to position that to the board that it's not, we're not looking for a report card per se. It, it's really more of a, a better um, insight and understanding of what our customers are, are thinking about us so we can get better, regardless uh -huh. of how good you are. One thing that I will share, because I, I was so proud of many of the people in this. So 
for those that are um, <clears throat> that are on the call, I'm sure many of you are aware that Rapitoni had a significant outage this year for, in some cases, weeks at a time. Um, <clears throat> and several of the um, participating MLSs are, are Rapitoni customers. Um, we did let them, one of them was about to go live the day that it went down. And we were like, eh, maybe we won't do this today. Maybe not the best day, right? Yeah. But we did give them a few weeks to let, you know, let the dust settle, of course. But what I was so inspired by, and I think goes back to what you said about service is those companies barely lost anything in satisfaction. And the reason was they got busy, right? I mean, we had, I think one of them might be on the call. They they were literally sending Excel spreadsheets once an hour on here's what we just got in. And, and it wasn't pretty, but it gave you the data to know what was active and what was on the market. Others, you know, use data shares back and forth to support one another. They did a lot of different things, but the common link was, we are going to do whatever it takes day or night to help our customers through this. And they came out the other side, very positive. So it's like, if you can come out of that and still have a good result, I, I really think any MLS can come out of anything. Even well, if you, you don't, know, I, I, think, I, I think there's a ton of people, a ton of MLSs out there, Marilyn, that, that have, I don't, I don't want to say better resources, but better, great ideas, you know, and, and by, by getting involved, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to compare Cren to another hundred MLSs or whatever that baseline is that we can get to, you know, with with, exactly. uh, with your survey. But um, because I just know there's a ton of ideas, which <laughs> kind of leads me into something we uh, maybe skipped over, but you mentioned it before was uh, the peer-to-peer uh, -peer, because I only got to be involved in one of those, but. I can say that the, the one that I was involved with, man, there were just some great leaders on that call with some awesome, uh, just tidbit idea takeaways. You know, I mean, I know we say a lot of those great ideas come at the lobby bar, but we actually had a great one uh, when we all got together and said, hey, let's discuss all the results. And I think you hosted that webinar um, yep. or, or whatever it was, a closed meeting. And um, we all discussed our results and some of the things that we can look at and whatnot. And to me, that peer-to-peer -peer thing is really important um, because, um, you know, there's a lot, lot smarter people out there than me, you know, and uh, they got some ideas that really, I mean, just click with me, you know, and like, oh, well, we'll do this. Well, we'll do that. We'll, we'll, we'll change tracking systems or, or whatever it is or, or how they track it or, or the length of their calls or whatever it is. Um, but I think that was a huge thing for, for me was, was that peer to peer discussion. And, um, there's so, so many super smart people in this, uh, MLS world for sure. And, uh, and I welcome them all to come on here and, and, uh, let's put our brains together and, and, uh, figure out how we can be great servants of the customer service. Um, so here's a, here's a, a, a short-term question that came from, um, from one of our uh, viewers here and just your perspective, Jeff, and I'll give you mine too. How important do both of, both of us feel that it is about MLS is getting information about what's going on with the lawsuits and the settlements that are taking place right now? <laughs> is, that, is that our job or is it, are we just one of many people? How, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Uh-oh, there's a story here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, well, I did do a presentation last week for for one of my local associations and it went over fairly fairly well. Um, I do, yeah, I do think it's it's our responsibility to just communicate what we know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think your MLS uh, attorney, if you have one, is going to tell you to tread very lightly in what you commit to and what you say and 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 whatnot. And uh, and maybe I I think in that instance I read a disclaimer before I started my presentation at that association. And so um, I think that's a wise thing, but I do think, yeah, we're, we're the MLS. We got to be a communication mouthpiece to, to some of these things to the comfort level of, of your MLS leadership is what I think, Marilyn, right? You know what I mean? Like every leadership is going to have a different comfort, comfort level with that. Um, to me, I just regurgitated the settlement. I went through the settlement. I read it 20 times. I tried to pick out the pieces that made sense and tried to break them down and, in um, layman's terms, you know, what that meant for you as a listing agent or a selling agent. And yep. um, yeah, I just gave a, a high level overview of the, of the settlement. So I do. Yeah, that's a good question. And um, I, I say it's a delicate, it's a delicate subject right now. 
It is. Um, I think NAR has done a good job of also providing us with the talking points that we need to. One of the things that I'm hearing a lot is, and I actually drafted this, if anybody wants a copy, just throw it in the chat and I'll send it to you. I wrote a consumer facing version of what happened because the media is getting it all wrong. Like most of the time on most things, right? You know, they make it sound like, you know, commissions are going to get cut in half and half you guys are going out of the business and blah, 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 which we all know isn't really what's going on. Right. So I wrote one that was like, here's how a buyer's commission works. I like, there's a broker and then there's an agent and then there's another broker. And then there's another, like, I literally did like the one-on-one version of how to, how do commissions actually get paid? Um, and then, you know, I didn't have any opinions about I mean, who knows? Are we going to lose people? I don't know. Is commissions going to go down? I don't know. I can't make any statements about that stuff, right? But I can counter it with at least black and white facts because that's not what the media is doing. The media is like, they're, you know, the leading story, you know, news at six, learn how you're going to spend half as much on commissions and real estate moving forward. I hear those. And I'm like, oh my God, where are they getting this from? Right. And I know NAR has tried to educate the media because I've been on two calls with them. So it's not that they're not trying. Luckily, I've had a few people call me that are, we because we have a PR company, so trusted media people, and, and they'll say, is this how it's going on? I'm like, no, and I'll explain it to them. But most of them aren't doing that, right? So that's also helpful is to think about how to arm, not only what you're saying, but how to arm your clients with for their clients and just the general public. I'm sure you're at a dinner and people are, I, I mean, everywhere I go now, people are asking me, it's such public news about what's going on. So um, yeah, I walked in. I walked in Sunday last Sunday on uh, what was that St. Patty's Day, and and to meet a couple friends for a beer. Oh my gosh, you know, it was the first thing I got drilled. Hey, what does that mean? And blah blah blah, and and all that. Um, but you know, I, I would say one thing is, um, and I'll, and I'll say this is my opinion. Yep. But I, I truly believe that people that are dedicated to our business and are in it for the long haul, and this is their the way that they make a living, I'm going to make a prediction that they might even make more money. I don't disagree with you on that. Um, and so that means to me, reflecting on that, what that means is there might be a fewer subscribers at the MLS world. Yep. And so I, I think strategically, that's one thing I'm thinking in the back of my head. What does that mean? How do we run the company with with 25 less subscribers, um, you know, those types of things are, are the effects that they're going to have. But to me, that's, that's a prediction I'm kind of making because I do personally think that people that can agents and brokers that can speak their value, um, they're going to make more money. Yep. And what's your feeling? Uh, this wasn't a question. This is a question for me, for you, Jeff, but while we're on this topic, um, What's your feeling about what role, if any, the MLS should play in helping buyers agency raise their stature and tell their story more effectively? Do we have a role in that, do you think? <clears throat> I, I, I just think there's a lot of opportunity there, Marilyn. What it might look like, um, I don't know. But, you know, I mean, I, I've heard ideas thrown around about tracking buyers agency agreements and, and uh, just off the chart that you can't even think of ideas um, with all this innovation, you know? And so, yes, I do point blank. I, I do think that's, that's part of our responsibility. Um, okay. I, I think it's a shared responsibility though. I think that's an association responsibility, a MLS and a broker. Um, it has to start with the broker for sure. Um, yeah, but, but I think the MLS and the associations, we got to support that. Well, and uh, there's a different question that came in, Sarah. Sarah, I didn't see that I, as I was asking that. Thank you. Um, and when I wrote this note, this consumer facing note, I did it for a couple different MLSs and I pulled out what are the tools that we have? So we have market stats as an example. We can definitely, a buyer's agent can use those tools very effectively to educate a potential buyer about what's going on out there. They can look at not only short-term trends, they can look at long-term trends. I mean, a lot of the, like, I would look at InfoSpark specifically, but there's a million of them, right? They have 10, 15, 20 years of data in there sometimes. And one that I love to use is it, it'll say, I have one from Freddie Mac, actually, 1960 to today, home prices go like this, right? They do go like this, they glitch yeah. a little bit. But if you can yeah. teach people that it's not going to ever be a bad investment in the long haul, ever, at least since 1960, like we got pretty, 
65 years of history here, right? Yeah. Um, so things like that, you know, things like how do you use a CMA again for advice and guidance? RPR has got a lot of great stuff in it for people that have those. So think about the value of your tools relative to how a buyer's agent can use it to explain what they do, educate people, engage people, maybe for a longer haul when they're not quite ready to buy right now, but a way, you know, something like an e-property watch, for example, that's more of a homeowner thing. But, you know, there's a lot of different components. So that's how I would think about it is like, look at every tool you have and say, how can a buyer's agent leverage it and start promoting that to buyer's agents that even if we're not talking about, like you say, tracking things or all of that stuff, because we're kind of getting pushed out of that tracking world, right? With compensation. But what are the other things we do that are, yeah. that, are that could be valuable? So anyway. Yeah, and I, you know, I think when, when it comes to that too, is we just got to continually evolve, right? And we've done this for years at the MLS. And so it's just another another cycle of evolution of providing something different um, to, you know, our subscribers and participants. I mean, that that's the way I look at it is this is an opportunity to provide something along those lines, buyer's agent, whatever it is, um, yep. you know, just like NAR right now is, is uh, you know, offering the ABR course for free, right? I mean, I think there's some qualifications in there or something, but but those types of things are, you know, we got to, we got to react to evolve to, to the changing times. Exactly. I might not have the answer of what's going to, what it's going to look like at the MLS for, for buyers agents, but I know somebody on this call does have that answer and they're going to share it with us. Yeah. Well, and it, for any of you that are doing strategic planning this year, please make sure you talk about things like that and talk about the scenarios like Jeff is talking about. What if, you know, we have 550,000 agents and brokerages that now they cannot require NAR membership. What does that mean? If they drop out, do they drop out of the MLS? What does that mean for us? How do we keep them from not dropping out on both sides, right? Like make sure you're talking about those really fundamental things. It's it's a good, it's a it's a time when sometimes it's easy to get scared and just run in the corner and hide. <laughs> we all want to do that, but that's probably, probably not the right answer. So I'm just going to close this out. So I just wanted to let you know, if anybody wants to, um, sign up for the customer experience index. You just put it in the, you know, in the, uh, or not even sign up, or if you just want to learn more about it, just send your email in the box there and we'll happy to follow up with you on that. Um, and Jeff, if anybody has any questions for you, I assume they can send it your way and they can get answers from you too. Yes. And I, I can put my uh, email address in the, in the chat or whatever. If, yeah, that'd be if, great uh, if you could do that. That'd be awesome. The host and panelists maybe. Yep. Yeah. Just do it for everyone. Host and panelists. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Okay. All right. And if you if you want to just request a proposal without doing that, you can just click on this QR code here and that will come right into our uh, inboxes and we can uh, we can get that for you too. So again, we, we glossed over the program pretty quickly here. If you have more questions about it, happy to answer it. If you need us to talk to your board of directors about it, because sometimes they don't quite get why we need this type of level of consumer transparent or customer transparency, happy to talk to them as well. So with that, Jeff, I want to say thank you so much. You have a great drive over the mountains. Hopefully you won't uh, get too much snow and everyone have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks a million, Marilyn. Hey, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right. Have a great day, everybody.